Would you stand with me? I want to uh, sing this song, and maybe you'll help me sing it or something. We can't do it sitting down. This is a song I wrote years ago, gave it to Jason Crabb, and uh, he can hit them high notes, you know. His face gets red and the veins pop out on his neck. But uh, I found this song, and I thought, you know what? I like it so well, I'm going to sing it myself. So uh, my veins are going to pop out. But... Uh, I love this song, man. I never will forget when the Lord gave it to me. And uh, I hope you like it. If you don't, just act like you do. Yeah, crank it up. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, Jesus never opened his mouth. From the trial to the crucifixion To the grave he was laid out After three days in a borrowed tomb I can hear the angels sing As the lamb came forth As the lion in the line became the king You won't find him again at a whipping post Standing there so meek He won't be nailed to a rugged cross Through his hands and through his feet There'll never be another Calvary cause he don't have to prove one thing. That day the lamb became the lion and the lion became the king. Woo! Oh yeah. Is he your king tonight? Ah, uh, listen. When Jesus left his splendor to live on earth with man, by most he was rejected because he came forth as a lamb but the day is soon approaching when every eye shall see the lamb and lion of judah will be crowned the king of kings you won't find him again at a whipping post standing there so big he won't be nailed to a rugged cross to his hands There'll never be another Calvary. He don't have to prove one thing. That day the lamb became the lion. The lion became the king. You won't find him again at a whipping post. Standing there so meek. He won't be nailed to a rugged cross. Through his hands and through his feet. There'll never be another Calvary. He don't have to prove one thing. That day the lamb became the lion became the king. That day the lamb became the lion. The lion became the king. Woo! He's my king of kings. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Ah, my, 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 my. Praise God, praise God. Sit down. My, my, boy, if that won't wear somebody out. About three years ago, a fellow by the name of Aaron Wilburn came to my house. And most of you probably don't know who Aaron Wilburn is, but you do know his songs. He wrote a song called, Just Any Day Now Our Lord is Coming. What a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. Home is where the heart is. My heart's on home. Uh, that sounds like home to me. Four days late, it's beginning to rain, and Jesus is a miracle man, and on and on and on. One of the greatest writers ever. And he came to my house in Ripley, Mississippi, and, and he wanted to write, so uh, we, we laughed and, and had a good time and went upstairs and, I asked him if he had anything on his mind, and of course he did. It was heaven. 90% of his songs are about heaven. And he told me this little title, and uh, in a little while we wrote this song. He was a great friend. I'm telling you, he was a good man. About a year later, he came down with COVID, and he went to heaven. He lost his life. So I recorded this the other day, and... I haven't sang it out but about three times, so uh, I do have a cheat sheet. It's called, I Sure Could Use a Little Heaven Today. I 
I've heard that heaven is a place of joy. No heartaches, pain, or tears. So if you have more than enough, Lord, I sure could use some here. You know I'm thankful for everything you send my way. But I sure could use Use a little heaven today. I don't mean to sound ungrateful cause I know I've been blessed. Lord, you've been more than faithful. But could I make one more request? I sure could use a little heaven today. Lord, you know I've never been to that city. But if it's what they say it is, I could use some here today. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. Lord, I know that I've been blessed. You've been more than faithful. But could I make one more request? Lord, I sure could use a little help today. Lord, somebody here tonight could just use a little heaven today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. If you would stand and open your Bible to the book of Mark, chapter number 5. Mark, chapter number 5. Boy, the praise and worship team is just absolutely outdoing themselves. Now, aren't they great? I would ask you to give them a hand, but you'd drop your Bible. So, just tell them, man, they're, they're great. You are so blessed, Brother Chris. And... Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 25, if you found it, say amen. If you're not looking, say amen. If you can't find it, just open your Bible and look spiritual standing there. Everybody, they won't know that you, you don't have it. And a certain woman, not just any woman, a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. 
I have to read Luke 8, 44. It says she came behind him and touched the border or him of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stanched or was stopped. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what I feel and what I sense in this house tonight. Oh God, I pray that you would touch your servant. Give me a fresh anointing, Lord. I pray that you would touch our ears to hear and prepare our hearts to receive. Lord, I pray souls will be saved, backsliders will come home, lukewarm Christians will get on fire, hypocrites will start living right, fill with the Holy Ghost, God, set somebody free of an addiction, do a miracle tonight, and when it's all over, we'll give you the glory and all the praise and all the honor, because it ain't about anybody here, it's all about you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. You may be seated. Before the days of Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, medical cards, Obamacare, and all the other things, this woman was very sick. She had been sick, the Bible says, for 12 long years. The sickness that she had, the issue of blood was considered unclean. It is said that she would have to approach people by letting them know, I'm unclean. Now, what an embarrassing situation that would have been. How humiliating it would have been to be in that condition. Now, the Bible said that she spent all she had on physicians. I don't know how she got her money. I can't see her being that sick, able to work or hold a job. Possibly someone would see her bent and broken and weak and pale, and they would throw her some coins. When she got enough coins, she heard of a new physician. She would go see him, and he would give her the same Sad story. I cannot help you. And the Bible said she suffered many things of many physicians. Sometimes we read over that too quick and we don't really get what it's talking about. I thank God for our physicians today. I've had several surgeries. I mean, I'm scarred, brother. But I like it when you go in that room where it's cold and they get you a warm blanket and put it over you. And then they say, we're going to shoot this in here, and you're just going to feel a little tingle for a minute. It's just going to settle you down. And the next thing you know, you've had surgery. It's over. I like that. It wasn't so in these days. Brother, when they had surgery, it was a rough deal. So she suffered many things of many physicians but rather grew worse. Now, the problem was she would go to see practicing physicians. I don't care how long he's been your family doctor. He, as good as he may be, he is a practicing physician. He doesn't know when he writes you that prescription if it's going to heal you or make you polka dotted or make you have some kind of spasm. He don't know what's going to happen. He's a practicing physician. But one day, she heard about a man named Jesus. She heard what he was doing. And she said, I must see him. And here's the awesome thing about it. He's not a practicing physician. He is the great physician. He don't have to draw blood he don't have to do an x-ray. He just sees it and heals it and fixes it. And when she heard him talking about Jesus, she said, I've got to get to where he is. I want to preach tonight on this subject. 
First, I want to ask you a question. How many came here to get something tonight? You didn't come just to see what was going on, did you? You didn't come just to see how crazy I was going to be tonight. You, didn't. you came to get something. My next question is this. How bad do you really want it? You mentioned that a while ago, right after I walked to the stand. How bad do you really want it? Let's talk about it. If you get what you need tonight, I don't care what it is, salvation, Holy Ghost baptism, sickness healed, chains broken, addictions taken away, you will have to go the same route this woman went. There are four things she did that you'll have to do to receive. Are you with me? So you better listen close to what you got to do to get what you need. Amen. The first step is faith. Romans 10 and 17 says, So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It comes from hearing the word of God. I remember when we used to travel and sing. We had those groupies that would follow us around. And they would tell you, we don't really like preaching. We like the gospel concerts. Well, if you don't like preaching, you ain't got much faith. Because the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. He gives you a measure of faith, and then faith expands grows from hearing the Word of God. You have to have faith before you can get anything here tonight. It's the only way you can get anything from the great physician. Hebrews 11 and 1 said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Do you know what that's saying right there? That's saying it can't be scientifically proven. You reach into nothing and get a hold of something. That's faith. Faith is knowing that you know that you know. Not that only he could or he might, but that he will. Can I get an amen in this house tonight? <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 6 says, But without faith it is impossible. You hear me? Impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is a rewarder to them that he is, and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. I say to people all over the place, turn me back up a little. I was getting, that was getting good. If you're thinking about coming up here getting something tonight, and you don't have faith, and you don't believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Don't come up here. Don't make us pray 30 minutes for you and wear us out. The first step is in believing that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Can I get an amen? Now, I quoted this verse to a preacher one time. He told me it wasn't in the Word of God. But it is. We may not want it to be in there. But it's in there. James 1 and verse 3 says this. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You know what that means? The more you go through, amen, the more that faith has grown. I got a boy named Adam, sings with the Gaither Vocal Band. One time, Adam saw a guy that had some big muscles. He said, I want some of them. He didn't buy a DVD and sit down and watch it and get it. He didn't read a book about it. He found out that if you're going to get those muscles, it takes resistance. You can't build muscle unless it's put to resistance. So he went down there and began to work those arms and the muscle. Can I tell you faith works the same way? The trying of your faith worketh patience. The more you put your faith through the test, the more you keep believing when the world said it ain't going to happen, the more you keep singing when the devil says you've lost your soul. Come on now, your faith begins to grow. 
So the first step is faith. You got that one down? Ready for number two? I'm going to hang around here for a minute. The second thing she did is she refused to give up. Would have been easy, wouldn't it? Would have been easy to throw your hands up and quit. Woman, you look bad. What are you doing out here? You need to go home and just die. It's what a lot of people do. There's people in nursing homes right now that can't wait on themselves. That when they went in, they was raising garden and canning tomatoes. But they just gave up. You can't give up. Amen. One time in the Word of God, Jesus told this little story. I'm like, wow. Just out of nowhere. He said there was a judge. And there was this little lady. They would go down to that judge and say to him, avenge me of my adversary. He said, I'm not going to do it. Leave. I don't fear you and I don't fear anybody else. Get on out of here. But Jesus, the way he told the story, she just kept coming back. Avenge me of my adversary. Get out of here now. I told you, leave me alone. And she came back the next day. Avenge me of mine adversaries. And Jesus said one day, he said to her, I'm going to avenge you of your adversary. Not because I fear anybody. Basically, this is what he's saying. You are worrying me to death. You will not shut up. You will not give up. Come on now. He said that's the way you get a hold of God. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. Never give up. Winston Churchill's great speech, he gave his last speech, and it was three lines of never give up. And what a speech. What about oh, Elijah after he'd come off of that great victory on Mount Carmel? The power of God came down. Victory came. The fire fell. He jumped up, and he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. You know what I like about that? He hadn't even prayed yet. He hadn't even asked for it yet. That's faith in reverse. He said, I'm fixing to go to the mountain. I'm going to pray. And he took this little fellow with him that he was training. He prayed, and I know he felt good about it after what he had just experienced. I know he got down on his knees, and I know he knew it was going to he said, go check the weather. He had left his iPhone at home. So they had to do it the old-fashioned way. And he looked up in the sky, and he came back. Now I can just see him. I'm sorry, preacher. There ain't a cloud in the sky. What do you do now? You pray again. And he prayed again. And he felt good about it. Come on now. Don't you give that second prayer any less than you did the first one. Come on, somebody. And he prayed again. He said, check it out again. Boy, I know this is it. Nothing happened. That went on seven times. But on the seventh time, here come the little old fella back, big old grin on his face. I can just see him as he said, preacher, it ain't much, but I see a cloud. He ain't very big. It's about the size of a man's hand. Praise God, that preacher jumped up. He, he, hallelujah. He said, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. And he ran 30 miles under the power of the Holy Ghost and outran the chariot of the king. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, how bad do you want it? Daniel prayed 21 days and would have prayed six months or a year. The angel came and said, I heard you the first time. But we've been fighting our way back through. How bad do you want it? What about Paul? If anybody could get a prayer through, the apostle Paul could get a prayer through. But it took him three times, and he got an answer. The answer was no. How many know that is an answer? We don't ever pray for a no, but he got a no. He said, but I'll tell you what, 
I can't remove the thorn, but my grace is sufficient. I'm going to bring you through it. Come on now. You've got to be persistent. You've got to keep praying. Even when you don't see any hope that anything's happening, you pray anyway. That's just the way it is. Never give up. Never give up. There are people here maybe tonight that are struggling with stuff. And you feel so beat up because you went back and did it again. You feel pretty beat up over it. You messed up again. Same thing. I remember when I got saved, 16, I smoked Marlboro Reds. And a cup of coffee every morning. Two or three of them. When I got saved, I thought, well, I've got to quit these things. So I quit them. About a hundred times. My Lord, I'd quit them for four or five hours. And man, I could smell somebody smoking one. I could eat that thing. I'm telling you. Then I got to where I was laying them on the altar. That ought to do it. So I'd go to church and lay them on the altar. Bless God, this is it. No more. Stopped on the way home, got another pack of Marlboro Reds. But one day, I threw them filthy things in the trash can. And I never picked up another. And I can't stand the smell of them. I can't. Come on now. Don't give up. I don't care what you're struggling with. I had the weirdest thing happen. In Louisiana one time, I was preaching a revival. I was giving an invitation. I was standing about right here. I had all the people stand, bow their heads. You know, I was going through the, anybody here not right with God, you need to be saved. Uh, raise your hand. You know, everybody's got their eyes closed. And I looked up, and here comes this guy beside me. He approaches me. He says, uh, now, while I'm giving an invitation, this was the craziest time in the world to even be talking. He comes up and said, I got drunk last week. Good God, man, what do you want me to do about it? And he just dawned on it. He must have been dealing with this. He must have been struggling with this. I think he was a deacon or something. He helped take the offering up. But while he's telling me this, we got an altar call going on out here. I said, okay. I said, are you sorry? Oh, yeah. I said, do you plan to never do it? No, I'm not. I said, look at all them people out there. And he looked at them. I said, do me a favor. Don't tell any of them. Don't tell any of them. I said, get on your knees right now, and you tell Jesus you're sorry, and you're going to never do it again. I'm here to tell you, I don't care how much you mess up. I don't care if you have to ride the altar to heaven. Jump on it and hang on, brother. His grace is sufficient. Don't give up and don't blow your brains out just because you can't fix it yourself. Be faithful. Be persistent. Keep praying because God's going to pull you through it. He's going to give you victory. He's going to break that hold on you. I don't care what it is. I don't know who that was for, but it didn't cost you a thing. Now, it dawned on me one day. The reason sometimes that people have to pray so much about the same thing is it's possible they're not in their season. We have seasons. Do you know that? Center people only has four seasons. Church people got five. Winter, summer, spring, fall, and due season. You don't believe me? Read Psalms chapter 1. It said you'll be blessed in what? Due season. And then Paul said, be not weary and well doing. Because what? 
you'll reap in due season. So it dawned on me, maybe some people just are not in their season. Now, I'll give you a little explanation. It's tough on somebody that's not in their season, and they come to church sometimes and have to sit beside somebody that's in season. You can tell who's in season. I'm going to do this up here so you can see me. Woo! Woo! What time is it? Lord, ain't it about time to get this started? Woo! Lord, I feel it already. Come on, brother. Let's get this thing going. Amazing grace. Woo! Amazing grace. How sweet this is. God is good all the time. Now, it's terrible when you're out of season and you got to sit beside them people. You know what you want to say? Shut up. Sit down. I don't want to hear it. Because there's times you're out of season. The preaching don't stir you. The singing don't stir you. You ain't felt the spirit in six months. It seemed like, God, where in the world did you go? What do you do? You keep on praying. You keep on believing. You keep on trusting. Because every saint of God is going to have their season. Hallelujah. Did you get point two? Please don't make me do that again. Point three. She refused to be content in the situation that she was in. Isn't that sad? I was at a church the other night. He was dead in a micro. And I guess it just brought this to me. I got on my knees and I was praying. I said, Lord, why was it that King Saul never desired to bring the ark back home where it belonged? And you know what the Lord told me? I'm not one of these people. Oh, he talks to me every three minutes. But this is what he said. They got content without it and there's a lot of dead churches that are content to be dead if you don't watch it the devil will suck the very life out of you the first thing you know you're dead and don't even realize can't get content when I think about that I think about in the book of Judges the Bible said seven times the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And every time God would send them a deliverer when they would pray, a Deborah, a Samson, a Gideon, a lot of them got a couple of chapters. There was one little fellow who didn't get but two verses. His name was Shamgar. You know what it said about Shamgar? Two verses. He was the son of Anath. And slew 600 Philistines with an ox goad. That's all it said. Isn't that something? Y'all are so excited about that, I can tell. Somebody's wanting to run the aisle right now. Let me explain it. <coughs> you see, Sham, do you know what an ox goad is? It's a stick, six feet long. <coughs> it's Time to think about it. It's a six foot long stick. A few days ago, I spent some time in a house with mildew and mold, and it's about shut me down. Six foot long, and on one end it had a stick. On the other end, it had a shovel. Now, what the shovel was for is when the farmer was plowing, and the pl mud would cake up on the plow. He'd take the shovel and clean it off. Now, what the sharp point was for, it's a goad. It was for <coughs> when the oxen would decide they was tired and they wanted to quit. He took the sharp stick. We're not through yet. Get the point? That's what the ox goad was. I got a feeling it was probably John Deere Green. 
I was at church the other night, and lo and behold, this good old country boy pulled out a John Deere Green Fender Telecaster. Ha! Some of y'all don't understand that, but that's, that's a redneck, brother. That's good. I love it. So here he is with his ox goat. Now, I read what Josephus said about this time. He said the Philistines would come in. They were so wicked and vile, they would take their farms. They would take their, their, their crops. They would uh, burn their houses. They would rape their wives. They would take babies out of the arms of mothers and throw them in the air and catch them on their spears. Now, that's what was taking place during the time of Shamrock. So here he is. He's plowing. He's got his ox going. He's probably out there singing. He never promised. The cross will not get heavy. I know he was singing one of my songs. <laughs> when all of a sudden he hears a massive army, and he looks up. Brother, they are riding in. Dust flies. And they stop. And they say, we're here on a mission from the king. We're here to take your farm. We're here to take what you have. And we're asking you right now to move out of our way. I can just see this. Thing. He's standing there with his ox goat. He looks like the American Gothic picture. You know, the dude with the pitchfork and bibbed overalls. He said, well, Hebrews were very proud of their heritage. I can hear him give him a little history. My daddy gave me this farm. And my father's father worked these fields. And my great-grandfather, I'm sorry, man. I just can't allow you to come in here and take my farm. I just can't do it. I can hear that smart aleck. He says, well, man, have you looked at how many there is of us? I can just hear him. I don't know what he said, but I got a feeling. He said, well, I'll tell you what. I may look like the minority, but I got news for you. I got somebody on my side that makes me the majority, and I'm warning you right now. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to cross this line because if you cross this line, you're in trouble. The captain says, charge. And all of a sudden, brother, there's dust flying, hair, teeth, and eyes. People standing back looking and saying, oh, God, poor sham God. There's not going to be anything left. But when the dust settled, here stood an old farmer. I told him to leave me alone. I tried to tell him. And then you know what God did? Said to the Holy Ghost, go count them. Let's see how many dead people there is. Because Gerald's going to need to tell that at that camp meeting. He's going to be preaching and telling that story. That's the way God worked. Come on. 600 dead Philistines because he refused to be content to have some. God, are you listening to me? You have to get to the point that you tell the devil, you cannot have my kids. You cannot have my grandchildren. You cannot have my husband. You cannot have my, you can't have my home. Come on now. Can I hear somebody say amen in this house? Refuse to get content. I can't stand dead servants. I can't. I love all denominations. But I'm not a Pentecostal because they acted like the Methodists. That ain't the thing that attracts me. Brother. I ain't got nothing against the Methodists. I got saved during our Methodist preaching. I never will forget my mama made me go to revival that night, 16 years old. We was raised Pentecostal, so you know what? We always heard about the Methodists and Baptists. All them preachers, oh, there ain't nothing to them. I thought, well, there ain't going to be nothing to it. It's a Methodist preacher. Brother, he was an old-timey Methodist preacher. He ripped me. He ripped me up and down. I love a move of God. You got that point? 
Let's go to four. She refused to let anything hinder her from touching him. There's where the problem comes in. There's some people that are so baptized and pickled in religion, you can't get close to them. Oh, Lord. This is the honest to God's truth. I know it's hard for you to believe what I'm fixing to tell you. When the Crab family starts singing and traveling, we agreed when we leave. We had a great church. I mean a great, a growing church. And we got together and we talked. And this is what we said. We're not going out there to sing. We're taking what we had here to them people out there. And that's what we did. I don't know if you've ever been to see them or not, but I've seen nights when both twins, one would go that way and one would take off running that way. Lord, you see some of them wigs spin around. Woo, what was that? I remember those days. I never want to lose that. But there are people who would say, we just don't believe that way. Then they got to tell them that we had powders that we was throwing on people. Would make them jump and run and fall out. Brother, does anybody here know where I can get some of them powders? Because I know a lot of people that needs a good old dose of them right now. Come on now. People got so much stinking religion, they can't even get close to the Lord. They got so much stinking pride. There's more people in hell over pride than any other reason. Pride is a good thing. It'll make you take a bath, brush your teeth, put a little of that stuff on. I've, known, I've seen some folks always had that much more pride. How about you? But if you don't get it sanctified, it'll send you to hell. Stinking pride. You can't get anything from Jesus full of pride. Forget it. He hates it. He absolutely hates it. Pride. They just had Pride. Do they know what the Bible says about pride? Pride goes before what? Come on now, world. <laughs> and she said, I got to get to him. I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to let everybody know I'm unclean. I'm not supposed to be around people. But I want it bad enough. I'm going to break a few rules, a few of them religious rules. I'm going to break them because them people that that telling me all this do's and don'ts, they ain't really helping me nut. They ain't really doing nothing for me. But that man up there, he's the man I need to get to. And I'm sorry, and I can see her. She kind of pushes her way through. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Let me get through here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then in a minute, she said, get out of the way. Move. i got to get to him. And she touched him. And when she touched him, the Bible said her blood was dried up and she was healed from that. She refused to let anything or anybody hinder her from touching Jesus. God, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Some people come to church and they kind of have a good time to worship the Lord unless certain people come with them. I have seen that. If certain people were sitting beside them, they look like a mannequin in a... Dillard's. Come on. That's pride. That's pride, my friend. Something happened one time. I will never get over it. I'll never forget it. When we started singing, we bought an old bus for $15,000. Now, that's a piece of junk. A bus for $15,000 has been probably worn out five times at least. It was an old Continental Trailway bus. It leaked all like crazy. I remember when we, now our last bus was 800000 So that's the difference. 
That other one's a mud flap on that other bus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I put our name on the back of the bus, the Crab Family. And every time we stopped, to, somebody used a restroom or didn't have a restroom in it. <laughs> didn't have nothing. <laughs> no air conditioning, honestly, no heat. We really wanted to say. Every time we'd stop for something, I, I had a bottle of 409 and a rag. I'd go back and clean the crab family name off. <laughs> that thing throwed all out so bad. Can you imagine a drunk driver following us on a rainy night and that oil hitting his windshield? I guarantee you we got called worse than crabs a few times. But here we are. Somebody gave us a list of churches to call, and they would have us come and sing. So we just stepped out. We didn't have a booking agent, nothing. We just stepped out. And the first month, we were busy every day except for maybe two or three days. I preached, kids sang, and that was it. So here we are. All the churches we went to were little bitty churches. One time, we went to Evansville, Indiana, and pulled in the parking lot, one of the most beautiful churches. And you know what I said? We're at the wrong place. <laughs> oh, thou of little faith. I said, go out there and look at the mailbox, and let's, let's make sure we got the right address. And by that time, Lord, I done lost a gallon of oil in his nice, pretty parking place. Lord, and it came back, and he said, oh, yeah, this is it. And there was a man standing in the door. Oh, come so we start unloading our junk. I had made the speakers out of plywood, painted them flat black, and put chicken wire over the speakers. That's my old beer joint days. I didn't know what church people might throw a songbook or something, you know. But that's the kind of speakers we had. Our, our speaker cables were orange extension cords from Lowe's. And we walk in there, and that I mean, it was huge. It would seat probably 1,200 people, and that was the biggest church we'd ever been in. And uh, a chandelier there, a new building. Man, I had a Gomer Pile moment. Shazam! Oh, I wish Mama was here. Somebody said, what does Shazam mean? In the Greek, it means praise the Lord, I think. <laughs> I hope it does. <laughs> so we set that... Did a little sound check. We didn't have any original song. We just sang, look what the Lord has done, and Jesus on the main line, and there is a river. And we got there that night. Us boys went in there with our, our bus smoked so bad, our white shirts were gray. <laughs> That's the truth. I was at a, at, a, at a perfume place the other day, and you know what I saw? A bottle of cologne, cologne called Diesel. Man, we had that a long time ago. <laughs> Gray shirts and diesel. So we walk in there and the place is packed. I mean, every seat is just about filled. Boy, I couldn't wait. We got up. Boy, we was, we was going to town. We was having church. And here they were. We quit singing and they didn't even clap their hands. We tear down on another song. My daughter Tara started crying, and she came over. She said, "Daddy, what's wrong with us?" I said, "Ain't nothing wrong with us, baby." It was horrible. Can I tell you something? I don't care if you don't like them. Be courteous. Be nice. Clap your hands. Man, we sat through forty-five minutes of that, just mannequins. We sung everything we knew and <laughs> sat down, and I turned it over to the preacher. I'm sitting here on the front seat, and he calls one of the morticians and the pallbearers to come up and take up the offering. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting right here because when, when they get through with that offering, i got to preach. So I'm sitting there, I'm saying, Lord, I don't know if I can do this or not. 
God, Lord, I have never seen anything this dead in my life. Lord, we sung songs 100 miles an hour and nobody batted an eye. I said, Lord, I don't know. Here they're up there talking about the crab family, this new group. We need to take them up. You know, let's get this out of the way. That's what they say. Let's get this offering out of the way. I'm like, man, it ain't no way. <laughs> and while they're doing all that, the Lord told me, get out of your seat, get on your knees, and crawl across the front of the church. I said, really? We had a conversation. I said, Lord, ain't nobody else crawling. They ain't even moving. I said, come on, Lord. I, I, I told him, I said, I'll run around the building if you want me to. But crawl? Really? He said, crawl. How bad do you want it? I got on my knees, and this is as honest to God's truth. I said, Lord, you told me to crawl. But you didn't tell me I had to look at anybody. <laughs> and I took off about three steps. Don't you know my kids was thinking, what is wrong with daddy? My God, it, it, it was bad enough. Not, what are you doing? <laughs> they are taking up an offering. I'm crawling. And all of a sudden, it was like a hurricane. Blew into that building. I can't explain it. I've never seen anything like it. In the middle of an offering. Oh, I feel a holy ghost bumps all over. People started running to the altar. Sinners were crying and calling out for Jesus. People were being slain in the spirit. An hour later, someone would get up and say, I'm healed. Guess what? I didn't get to preach. We had a Holy Ghost hold down till midnight. Come on, somebody. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? And I got to reading about her. That's why I had to read this other verse. I wasn't the only one on my knees. Because the Bible said she got a hold of the hem of his garment. You don't do that standing up. You can't reach it. Your arm's not that long. You can't get on. I can just see her. She had to bend down on her knees. Oh, God, I'm going to catch him when he comes by. I'm not going to let him pass me this time. And she reaches out by faith and gets a hold of the hem of the garment. How bad do you want it? Stand with me. Come on. Praise the worship team. Raise your hands all over this building. Welcome the presence of God down right now. Hallelujah. 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 Ma, 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 ma. Hallelujah. 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 Send it down. Send it down tonight, Lord. Lord, you changed my message. Somebody needed this tonight. Somebody needed it bad. Somebody needs the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to get saved. Somebody needs a miracle. Somebody needs a healing. I pray right now that faith would rise up in them now and they would start this way in the name of Jesus. How bad do you want it? Come on. Come on! Yashakama ho shakama ye na maka. Yashama ye ha ya na maha ya na maka. Yashama ha. God, tonight's his night. I declare it now. In the name of Jesus. Devil, you're a liar. Tonight is his night. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it, brother. Receive it. God, touch my buddy here. Lord, you called him to preach. You filled him full of the Holy Ghost. God, you've been using him. Lord, he sent me that text the other day of all them souls saved. Oh, God! 
Stir the fire up in him. Oh, give him strength. Give him strength. Use him, God. God, as he goes and rattles the gates of hell, set him on fire. It's mine. Lord, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine, Lord. That preacher done preached it for me tonight. I declare it's mine. It's mine. I receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 